hi good afternoon so I saw this position on one of the forums and I found it quite interesting because there are times in a match or in a game where you're in similar situation situation and um, I wanted to try to video like discussing the tactics and strategy around it now you know I'm I'm just another player. I'm no expert. Uh, Jedi Master is just a moniker. It's a bit of a laugh. Um, so I'm trying to say I'm not the most fully qualified to go through this situation, but I just wanted to give it a shot. Um, so red is effectively double match point, which means the winner of this game wins the match because the cube's on two. So if red wins, they get to five. If green wins, they get to six and they win the match. So this is a very important moment in the game because green is looking to escape their last anchor. We're behind in the race by 40. So obviously we need to try and um, trap or, you know, keep this green check on the one point on the air so I've kind of seen a few ideas of what the right move is or what other people would play but um, yeah we're going to go through it ourselves so play from position and uh, we'll make green XG that's why I don't have to move for green and I'll make player one myself all right, that's done. Um, let's make sure that this dice is manual. Yeah, cool. Okay. No, oh, no, I didn't want to. Know. So the the two suggestions I've seen are hitting the ace point, which you'll do from the nine. So you'll go five and three. So now this piece cannot easily run. The only way they can run is if they roll a 1 and 6, or worse for us, a 2 and 6. Because they come in, they get out, and they put us on the bar. So, those would not be ideal situations. If green fans, which means they don't roll a 1 or 2, and they stay on the bar, which is what we call the strip here, if if they do not roll a 2 or 1 and stay there we run the gauntlet of them getting that kind of roll next time unless we roll a 10 or a 9 is it no unless we roll a 9 then we can move this piece on the 10 to the 1 and cover it or if we run a 7 and then we go from the 8 to the 1 point um obviously if in that eventuality I'd rather get a 7 because we take away that opportunity of our opponent rolling a 2-6 which is still a viable option for them so that's one idea of the right way to play the 5-3 another idea I saw is to come down to this point and then move the 10 to the 7 with the 3 now, if our opponent does not roll a 1-5 or a 6, they cannot hit us on the 7 point. Then, if we roll a 6, a 2, a 5-1, double 3, a 1 even, we can cover the 7 point. And then effectively, we've trapped this last checker of greens. So whilst the green checker is trapped, we can then bring these two pieces on the 22 point round the board and home, and hopefully we'll bear off first and we'll win the match. But there's 11 dice combinations out of 36, which have a six in them, plus we've got one five, and there's two dice rolls of 1-5. So 
So that's 13 opportunities out of the 36 possible for our opponent to hit us. If they hit us, we're not looking so pretty. They could hit us with a 6-2, double 6, or just any 6. We've then got to come in on only the 1 or 3. We might fan. I think the game could be over if we get hit. I'm not sure that taking this risk is the solution to what we're trying to accomplish. So these are the two different plays I've seen other people suggesting. My idea when I first looked at this problem was to play the 5 from the 10, come here, and then play the 9 from the 6. This way we don't leave a direct shot, only a 6-1 hits this piece here. But it means that next roll, if our opponent is still here, we've got more numbers that we can attack with. But again, this is not guaranteed either, because even if our opponent stays here, we might not have a roll that's conducive to hitting and covering. We might have to hit loose, as they say. Um, hitting loose would like put this check on there. No, I didn't mean to do that. Um, panel. Oh, no, let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, play from position with same dice as well. Okay. Let's put the dice back on manual. So that was my idea to bring some builders into attack. But again, th this method also carries risk. Another suggestion, which a friend of mine made, was bringing these two down. Now, yes, this does limit shots, so our opponent can only hit us with 6-2. If they don't, we've still got a few rolls to try blocking the 7 point. But, I don't know. I think this one, our opponent could escape us at the 6 6, 6 4, 6 5, 6 2 is obviously bad. And even if they don't, our next rolls to cover here are quite limited. It's only 3 2, 3 1, 2 1, double 1. Those are the only rolls which will cover the 7 point. So, long term, I'm not seeing too much value in this play um, I don't think it solves many problems going forward and yes so that wouldn't I don't think that's the best play I don't think my idea is the best play anymore either again Makes our, gives our opponent a chance, chance to escape. So after talking through the different options, I do think that this one is probably the best one for taking momentum away. Um, does give our opponent some awkward future rolls, like a 1-5, that have to come in, they're still blocked, that have to either slot the one point or open up the 18. As I said again, the problem with this one is how do we cover this later? This is going to be a liability as long as green is on the bar and we haven't covered this point. That's going to be a liability. Again, there's 11 rolls with the 1 in them. So our opponent's chances of hitting us are 11 out of 36. But this way where we try to make a 6 prime to block this checker in, we've already ascertained that there's 13 rolls which would hit here. So as you can see, backgammon's got 
some really tough choices and um, it's not always easy to know what's the right play what's what would you do let's see what XG would do and we'll know what XG does by clicking here oh no that's just showing what I would do Let's x let's plus plus the top four. See if it changes anything. Wow! So xg seems to have a clear favorite here. This one, which is a move with the thirteen shots. Why? Uh, that seems counter like counterintuitive. Let's see how it looks after this play. Five and three. Remember we were discussing how many, if we are missed, how many dice would cover this seven point. So there's 11 sixes. There's 11 twos. But some of those include the six two. So how do we get rid of those? I will say nine, so nine of the eleven twos added to the eleven sixes, so that's twenty. A one does it. Four two does it. And there's ah, there. Four two. We counted that already. So three three. Okay. So looking about 22, 23 out of the possible 36 would cover this if our opponent misses. So whilst, and then if our opponent misses and we cover, it's basically Jin. We, we've got the game set up. And I think that's what makes this move the best. The fact that once we close a seven point we've effectively trapped this checker behind a six prime can bring our other checkers round at leisure and um, the game's looking good what are some of xg's other choices this one here is the next best so to come there and come there yeah, but then we're still leaving 6-3 and double 6. Um, so that's, yeah, I didn't say that's great. Okay, this is my friend's idea. It's like the third best option. This is a variation then of these. Um my idea is way down here wow it's not very popular <laughs> yeah maybe because it doesn't really accomplish that much to be honest and it doesn't accomplish much this role and next role either potentially doesn't accomplish much unless you point it hits on the one then then you've got some builders to easily cover it so yes um i think xg's probably got it right here that take the risk now as long as your opponent doesn't get the one five or any six we're going to be in a much much stronger position so the security after the right move is what makes it worth taking the chance in the now so let's play the right move and then let's see how the game plays out we'll have to re-roll because one didn't fall and now one's jumped out <laughs> the one which landed out was a five oops come on then four and two okay so we missed now are we going to be able to cover five and two Okay, let me 
gonna get rid of this because I don't want to see this whilst we're playing. Five and two. So there's the two. What can we do with the five? Can come down from there to there. That looks good. Four and one. So now greens come to the edge of the prime. We want some good high numbers. Two and one, okay, or very low numbers. Because we don't want to break our prime. And we need at least a five or a six to jump here. Two and three. Right, we definitely need something more than a four. Okay, good, we got a six, three. So, what can we do here? That was actually a very nice roll because we can do that and that. So we are maintaining our six prime. We, yeah, um, we're maintaining our six prime and we put our opponent on the bar. If we weren't DMP, if we're looking for gammons, we could have tried a different move that doesn't put our opponent on the bar so that we could potentially pick up some extra checkers because if the opponent's on the bar then they won't break these points on 18, 19, 20, 21 but if they are not on the bar they could break them to our advantage if we pick them up but because it's DMP which is double match point the winner of this game wins the match I think this is the best move just put our opponent on the bar so four and one for us Oh no, that's for XG, 4 and 1. See, even with that play, we still could pick up this extra checker. Uh, we missed, we needed to roll a 3. Right, so we, don't, we still don't to break our prime, which we risked a lot to build. So we'll play that. 5 and 3. Right, so we're still left with a shot now if we roll a four, and we don't. Hmm, interesting. I think now, well, we have to move one there, one there, one there, one there. This way we've got maximum builders if our opponent doesn't roll a one. Let's see what happens. Five and two, right, so they've missed. Double two. Um, not brilliant because we're still stuck here. But we cover there. Right. We need anything over a two. Six and three will do. So one of these has to go. We don't want to get trapped if we do any silly rolls going forward. So I'll jump over there. It's not life or death to pick up that last anchor, even though it would be nice. So we'll play 6-2 from that checker. So if we roll a 1 soon, we can pick up the second one. But we're not going to, like, break a leg trying to pick up that second one. Oh, 4 and 5. Nope, that's it. We can't pick up that one. Five and three. Five and three. That's a good barren roll. Double one. Oh, there's the ones now. Okie dokes. One, two. One, two. So now we've got an even number of checkers left. So I think that's a good move. Six and four. Six and four. So we're taking off safely. Hopefully our opponent doesn't roll a six six. No. Nope. Yeah. This is what we need. We need a bit of daylight between them and us. Five and six is great. So now we want them to come in really. Oh, double three. We want them to come in because they're very behind in the race and we want them out of our hair. 
Um, here, the safest play would probably be to put all of these on the two because we definitely sure to get rid of these we won't leave any shot if we do a move like this and then take two off our opponent could dance again to get a one two three four and they don't come in we could get five one for example we take one off here and move it to the three our opponent dances again then we get two high numbers, so we have to take two of the three on the three off. And then our opponent has a shot now to come in and hit us. It's unlikely that they could win from being so far back, because we'd have ten checkers off, basically. Nine. We'd have nine checkers off. It's unlikely that they could win, but it's still possible. So I think if we do this, we are absolutely extinguishing all chance our opponent has of winning. Six and two. So they're in and out, out of our hair. Now it's just a straight race. Four, two. one not very good they won't get anywhere fast with rolls like that so the match is basically over guaranteed a win here Okay, so I think that shows that playing I think that shows that playing the move that we did is a pretty strong move. As soon as our opponent did not roll the six, then we we're in a very strong position, which is why we said it was worth taking that risk. Let's let's try again, but this time let's give our opponent a six. Let's see how it plays out if we do get hit. So I'm just going to put the one dice down as a six. I'm going to roll the the other dice to see what it comes with. Oh, that's like the perfect roll for XG. Okay, so let's see how the game plays out now. One and five can only bring one in. Three and two. Oh, one, yes, we wanted a one because we get that checker. Three and four XG fans, lovely. So we want a one or three. A three, lovely. Three. So now we can either escape one checker here or we make this one safe and avoid one four two four. I think it's more important to escape than to safety this one at the moment. So that's what I'm going to go for. Um, yeah, definitely three. There's three and five to come down there, or there's three and five. Those are our options. I'm going to go with this one, but I'd just like to see what XG would suggest. Okay, XG agrees. So it must have been the right play. It's worth taking that risk because then we can hit this one and then build up. Understood. Makes sense. 
So XG finds again. Six and two. What can we do with that? Ah, that's a hit. Or it's an escape. Because don't forget, this piece here is blocked. So when might we roll another two to jump out? Mm, this is another very interesting choice. So it's, so it's two and then a six. Or we hit by doing that. <sighs> choices, choices. That's why it makes backgammon so interesting. Different roles, different choices. You know, different people analyze, analyze the risk and the reward differently. And this makes the game very interesting. My feeling here is that I have to hit. I cannot take the chance of... I cannot take the chance of green coming in and then getting some momentum going. So I need to put two on the bar. Let's see what XG would have done. Oh, XG would have escaped. Huh? We'll see afterwards if it's close or not. Um, okay. Anyhow, this is the move that I said I would make. That's one which felt right to me. Six and three. One and three. Three and one. So I've played this way because I want to try and make the seven point. As my opponent's got two on the bar, there's no chance of him bringing both in and hitting me. So this is a safe play even though it looks very open. One of them is in. Two and one. Wow. That's a really nice roll. Because remember, this one here on our 24 points is quite well blocked in. So that has to be our two. And our one, very conveniently, closes a seven point, which traps his points on the ace. So that was a really nice roll. Does XG agree? Totally does. Of course. That's the move that makes sense. All right. Let's carry on. 6-3. Another fan for XG. 6-1. and one. What's our aim now? To try close a point? Nah. Let's get some extra builders from the back to come around the front. Four and two. Three and one. If we, we don't come to the eight point, because that gives green a shot with the six in fact we'd probably try to like to try make the eight point so now if we play that that gives green any six one six two six three i don't know if that's so clever so let's play safe which is this play come down and close up Let's see if XG would have done the same. Okay. Kind of a variation, I suppose. Bringing some boulders in. Yeah, that looks a nice play. Fair play to XG on that one. But that's not the move that I'm going for. But I, I accept that XG's move is the best to move there. Two and one for XG. Right. One and three. Oh, nearly got to cover there. 
This is quite an awkward roll because we don't have a one. Mm. Interesting. Do we do here? I don't think we can break our five five prime, which was seven to three. That's the most important asset we have at the moment. So three and one. How does that look? It means that if green does break cover. We've got some boulders to attack the piece that's left. Yeah, that looks all right to me. What would XG have done here? Okay. I wonder what difference it makes coming here. Two, four, six, and three. Hmm. I'm not sure why there's a difference. But as I said, I would have played this one. Okay. Six and two. All right, so XG has run. Five and one. Now what do we do? I think we have to hit XG. Five and one. We duplicate twos. We've got boulders if XG misses to cover. What else could we do? We can't make both of these safe. Five and one. We still allow XG to run out. I don't think we can give XG the chance to run out. I think this is a forced move. What would XG do in this situation? Okay. Ah, okay. So XG wants to bring this one down so that if if it fans, you've got extra boulders to cover this point at the cost of an extra sh return shot though. So I'm definitely preferring my option. All right. Phew. Phew. Right, now we can try close that two points up. Six and one. Oh, that worked out nicely. By staying back here. Oh, I suppose six covers anyway. But anyway, by staying back, we get to easily cover that. One and two. Whoa. That was a great roll for XG. That was a great roll for XG. Three and two. Covers the one point. We need, oh, just as we roll a one. We need a three, we need a three. long as XG doesn't roll a six for a while that will also work five six no good for us oh XG has gone we definitely need that three now we want the threes That red two was cock, so we'll roll again. Two, six. Double five. Okay, six two works. So we're in and running round. We need a shot to try and catch XG. Six two. 
two and three. One and three. Six and four. Sixes. Uh, we don't want that because we have to move our last guy. We have to. Now we don't get a shot. Uh, right, the XG is won this game. So as you can see, it's, I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, it wants us to roll out. All right, let's roll out. It's kind of like the win or loss depends on closing that seven point or not. When we closed it, we won. When XG hits us, then it's won. Maybe that's why fighting for that point is so critical. Uh, review so what should I have played here oh yeah it wanted me to come here I don't think that may would have made much difference to anything overall. Um, I think the game still would have played out the same way. So I made another error somewhere. Where where is that? That's the main one. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong ones. Ah, this one was a 43. Why didn't that highlight in a different color so I could find it easily? Okay. Yeah, it's a very small difference. Twenty. No, oh, it's a fairly big mistake. What did it want me? Okay, want me to do that? Then you give double six unnecessarily, though. Coming to fourteen means double six is now a double. That's no, not a double hit, but it's still a hit. Yeah. Okay. I'm not convinced that there's anything far wrong with that. Yeah. All right then, so, um, yeah, that was interesting to play it out. Um, obviously, the double hit here was quite lucky for XG. I mean, I know we gave XG a six, but six and a two, yeah, it did really put us on the back foot. But at around this stage here, yeah, after this 2-1, I thought we were in quite a strong position. And if you see here, we're 80% to win the game at this point. So, yeah, it's quite a, quite a comeback. Where, d where did it really go wrong for us? Yeah, I want her to break our too many low numbers here. And then we ran out 5-1 that looked good 
and then we covered as well. Ah, the 2 1 for XG. And then we fan, and then XG covers, and then we don't roll a 3 for ages. 1, 2, 3, 4, like 5 rolls, we don't roll a 3. That really shifted the momentum. Alright. But the whole point was to find out this position. What's the best move to make with this 5-3 here? And as we've ascertained, we need to try and close the 7 point. And playing 13-8-10-7 is our strongest and best way to achieve that objective. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I've learned a lot doing this, um, like thinking through it. Like I did not practice this before I did the video. I just, I, ha I wanted to try this position out and I thought I'll just do it l whilst I'm recording. So this is totally unrehearsed. Um, but yeah, I've learned something and um, I hope it, if someone else has learned something too, then that's great. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Bye.